national mood of political unrest and protest filtered into the United States prison system. And on September 9, 1971, prisoners at Attica Correctional Facility seized control of the prison. The prisoners took hostages and demanded better living conditions. The conditions at Attica were awful. There were no education programs. There were no people of color as guards. The medical care was horrendous. Uh, there were all sorts of grievances, and um, there was a group of people who wrote these grievances down and attempted the state to get to the state to look at them, and the state refused to look at them, and the entire prison was taken over, and 1,289 inmates took over D Yard, which is one of the four exercise yards at, at Attica. They called for negotiators, and um, negotiators were allowed to come in, and your father was immediately called. Your father was in the middle of every bit of this, and it was both his a, a bad moment for him and a great moment for him. As he walked into D Yard, my father was painfully conscious of his white middle-class prejudice. He told me he worried that he and the other observers might be murdered by the prisoners. He went in as a negotiator, just like everybody else, but being Bill and being more courageous than most people and also being uh, an actor, you know, a person who wanted to act, not contemplate. Uh, in short order, he, he was the person in charge. He was going to be the lawyer for the inmates. Dad came to see that the prisoners were taking a courageous and organized stand for their rights and he wanted to stand beside them. All of you that say you're politically oriented... They have a list of what they call practical demands. Just about every one of them have to do with the improvement of prison conditions. This is not a riot of prisoners who are seeking to escape. It is a riot of prisoners who are eminently practical and who are spelling out conditions which they feel should be improved. We want to apply the New York State minimum wage law to all state institutions. So we want to stop to slave labor here. We want to allow all New York State prisoners to be politically active without intimidation or reprisal. We want true religious sanctity. We want to do our own thing in this place. Number four, in all censorship of newspapers, magazines, letters, and other publications coming from the publisher. Five, Bill Kunstler and I were talking to them, and Bill was more optimistic than I was. He felt that they were not going to come in shooting. But I told him, listen, my experience is when people have guns and tanks and tear gas, they're going to use it. He made a big mistake. He didn't go to them and say, listen, there are 500, 600 law enforcement out there. They're all being lied to. They all have this unbelievable amount of weapons. And if you don't agree, they're going to blow you away. No one told them that. I think Dad was caught up in the idealism of the moment. He wasn't realistic about what the prisoners' options really were. You've got to negotiate for an amnesty. And if that real amnesty is obtained, it's on two levels, that there will be no administrative reprisals, and to that, the commissioner has agreed. But there must also, if this is your thought, be no criminal reprise. Sure. Amen. After three days of negotiations, Dad watched as armed troops amassed outside the prison gates. He and the other observers asked for more time and pleaded for Governor Rockefeller to come speak to the prisoners. Wait just a minute. Off to the side here, if you will, please. Over here. Over behind the ropes. Over behind the ropes. I've told you this. I've told you this. And when the inmate's mediator, William Kunstler, was turned away at the prison gate, he took that as a sign that the attack was imminent. 
that his two days of work to end this uprising peacefully had failed. What did the guard tell you? He said he had just received orders that no one but uniformed personnel would be permitted in. Why do you think that they're not letting you in, Mr. Counselor? I think they're killing people. 5 a.m. September 13th. We're on the roof of A Block waiting for the assault to begin. This is a team of 270 rifle shooters. Your instructions are that your weapon is not to be taken nor are you to be taken. You're to meet force with force. There have been uh, some of the prison personnel severely injured here this morning and we certainly don't want to see any of our people hurt. started shooting. It was like all hell broke loose. And the shooting just seemed to go on and on and on and on and bullets were hitting all around and you could hear people crying and you could hear people dying. And uh, it was just like they indiscriminately shot everyone. I smell gas, this up. Some sort of uh, tear gas. And I heard the sound of shooting. And I knew that people were being murdered inside there. And uh, I began to cry. Good evening. The four-day insurrection at New York's Attica State Prison came to a tragic end this morning. Negotiations gave way to force, making this the bloodiest prison incident the country has seen in four decades. Four hundred and fifty people fired over forty-five hundred rounds of ammunition, including uh, weapons with ammunition that's outlawed by the Geneva Convention. Dum dum bullets that exploded on impact. In the final hours of the revolt, led primarily by blacks, the inmates murdered nine of their white hostages. Twenty-eight convicts were killed by state troopers and sheriff's deputies who regained control of the prison. Prison officials told the press that the hostages were killed by prisoners who slit their throats. But they lied. Everyone who died that day was killed by state gunfire. 